it's Auckland anniversary weekend and the weather's being a little bit more average than it has been recently, but on the other hand it's still pretty humid. I managed to get out this morning with my friends Kirk and Steph and go for a nice couple of laps around Shakespeare Park up uh, in the north of Auckland on Whangapurua and had a fantastic time. And with three weeks to go, the topic of the day is pacers and crew. Before we get into that though, with three weeks to go, you should have, in no particular order, reached your maximum volume. You should have done at least one, preferably two nice big adventures out there, up to sort of maybe 50k, um, and you should be starting to think about your taper. Incidentally, I will stick above a little link to uh, a video on taper I did last year for my set of videos on the 102k. I've also seen a ton of people get out there and having an absolutely fantastic time. And my friends Chris and Charlotte from uh, Custom Made Fitness have got a couple of videos about course previews and what to expect on the course. So I will link to those in the notes below because they're really well worth a watch. Um, paces and crew. To cut a long story short, I think paces are extremely worthwhile and definitely helpful. Crew, possibly less so, but still might be very, very helpful. Okay, let's start off with pacers. A pacer is just someone who gets to run with you for part of the race. It's very common in 100 milers, more so in the US, less so in Europe. Um, at Tarawira and the 100 mile, you can have a pacer from Okataina, which is about 115 kilometers in the current incarnation of the race, and they can run with you the last 45 to 47 kilometers. Well, why would you want to have a pacer? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, um, from a racer's perspective, it's safety. They're there to help you out, but also they can help you out from a psychological perspective. Um, and that's really very well worth having when you are 12, 14, 18, 24 hours into the race and you've still got a marathon to go. It's a very good idea. So a few tips for runners. Number one, pick a pacer who is going to be able to complete the distance. Um, it's really worthwhile having someone who is also going to be able to complete it in the time that you kind of do. So if you're going to win the race, you're going to want someone who can do the last marathon in about four hours. If you're looking at just finishing within cutoffs, you're going to want someone who can do it reliably in probably about 10 hours. Now, there are occasional instances like my friend Scott Bowgen, who picked a friend of his to pace. Scott had a really great day, came fifth or thereabouts in the race, and spat his pacer out of the back somewhere between Miller Road and Blue Lake, I'm not quite sure. That's probably and comes under the heading of pacer failure. So pick someone who can do the distance, pick someone who can keep up with you. Um, don't also be afraid to tell your pacer what you want in terms of nutrition, in terms of whether you want to run in front of you or behind you, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Pacers. Number one, know the rules of what you can do and what you can't do. So um, pretty much about the only things you can't do is you can't give your runner physical assistance and you can't carry their gear for them. Uh, other than that, you know, you can help them psychologically, you can give them encouragement, uh, verbal abuse, borderline emotional neglect, um, you know, passive aggressive behaviour, your mom jokes, all of these things are perfectly fine. Physical violence, probably not, but threats of it, borderline okay. You just need to do whatever it is you need to do to get your runner to the finish, and that's very, very much up to your judgement and how your runner responds. I tend to respond if things are going well, a bit of encouragement. If things are going slightly less well, yeah, encouragement's good. But when I'm being a bit whingy and difficult, sometimes I need to be just told to take a couple of concrete pills and harden up. It's really very, very individual. Um, make sure your runner is eating and drinking appropriately, because that's one of the things after 75 miles, so 120 kilometers of running, you don't really feel an awful lot like eating or drinking. Um, so a little bit of a reminder every now and then, if you had a bite to eat, are you drinking okay, um, is probably a good thing. Do not, on the other hand, ask your runner how they are feeling every five minutes, because they are probably feeling awful. Um, and they don't really need to be reminded of this on a regular basis for the eight hours it's going to take you to grind your way from Okataina back to the waterfront and the finish. So together you need to work out what's going to work for you. When I ran the 2019 uh, Tarawera 100 miler with my pace of Kirk in, uh, you know, in I think it was 23 and a half hours or thereabouts, we worked out quite a good system where if I was running, I was clearly ahead of 
my average time to date, so that was good, so Kirk would run behind me. Um, if I was starting to be a little bit slower and walking, he would tend to move to the front and grind away just at a slightly faster pace than I was comfortable with. And this worked out extremely well indeed, because it just felt like I was dragged through to the end of the race. Um, so, paces, absolutely worth having. Now, crew is a little bit difficult because you'll only get to see your crew at a certain aid stations like Blue Lake, uh, Okatina. I think in the new course you still see them at Rarifakai too, but I'll, I'll, I'll correct that in the comments if I've got them wrong. For runners, choose your crew wisely. Have a small number of reliable people who are not going to be difficult, ask you lots and lots of difficult questions because it really doesn't help at the time when you're not feeling your best. You need someone who's going to kind of stick to the plan and make a judgment about what you need at the time and maybe ask you a question if something will help or something won't. Um, but, you know, they're, they're there to help you and asking you lots of questions really isn't going to help. Have a plan. Prepare them for where they need to be, when they need to be there, and what they need to do while they're there. Don't be afraid to tell them what you want. And if you're not sure what you want, try not to lose your shit with your crew. Uh, it does happen occasionally just because you're going to be feeling awful and maybe they're unknowingly being a little irritating. So a little bit of perseverance will work very well. Uh, final note, appoint a crew captain. That's the person in charge. And if you just want everyone to go away from that person, just politely tell them and the crew captain should just make sure everyone goes and gives you some space and then can give you what you need. Um, from a crew perspective, be organized, follow the plan, make sure you're there in plenty of time and you've got all of the your gear and nutrition and everything that the runner might need. Uh, if you're there and they've decided to have a drop bag as well as crew, go get the drop bag, be out there ready to go so when your runner comes in, you know, you're know you ready to, to, to give them aid. Um, don't take it personally if your runner is being really grumpy with you. They might be having a terrible, terrible day. So a certain amount of thick skin is probably a very, very good idea. Um, think about what your runner is likely to need. Listen to what they're saying, whether they're suffering from blisters, chafing, whatever, and act appropriately. And just use your judgment and try and be a good person. And like I said to Pacers, don't constantly ask your runner how they're feeling because they might be feeling really pretty bloody awful at that point. So a discreet, how's it going or are you feeling okay might be worthwhile, but don't say it at every aid station necessarily. Um, getting to enjoy a race with people is a really, really fantastic thing. So you just need to go out there, have this day, support your runner, whether you're crewing them or pacing, and enjoy the experience, because hopefully you're going to get to see a bunch of other runners doing really some quite incredible things out there. And it's a really wonderful experience for your friends and family. Um, you know, pacers and crew, don't be surprised if you see your runner and they look like absolute death. I personally suffer from um, uncontrollable shivering at times, and it makes life really, really, really quite difficult indeed. And when my crew met me at Okatina, they really had no idea that this was going to happen, and they looked terrified. It's quite funny in hindsight, but it wasn't so much at the time. So, everybody have a plan. Try and follow that plan. Use your judgment, and you should be, should be fantastic. So, um, three weeks to go, start thinking about your taper. I hope your training is going really, really well and you've been enjoying the lovely weather that we've been having and not letting the rain get you down too much. I really look forward to speaking to you in the next couple of weeks up to the race. And I'm, like I say, I'm not running, but I'm going to be travelling down and crowing my friend Kirk uh, to return the favour from what he crewed me in 2019. Look forward to seeing you out on the trails.